I'll teach you how to make this awesome 3D scan effect with After Effects. It works really well for 3D product and showcase videos. You can also use it for stylized text or title card animations. Here I used it in this retro scene to create this 3D character reveal. Once you understand the fundamentals, the possibilities are endless. Let's get started. We'll need a 3D asset for this effect. You can use a 3D model like one from rendercrate.com or you can use 3D text in After Effects. I'll start with a 3D model and use this character. I got the idle animation from mixamo.com and I uploaded the animation to the new character tool that we just released. This tool is free to build out 3D characters. You can download resolutions LOD1 and LOD2 completely free. It will also let you download animations in the GLB format, which is perfect for After Effects. I'm going to go fast through this first example so you can get an idea of how this technique works, and then I'll go step by step for the text example. After Effects can now process animated GLBs, so I'll just set that idle animation to active. Now I can pre-compose my 3D character. From here, I'll add the depth matte effect to the pre-comp. If I increase the depth amount, you'll see how it starts to transition based off of the 3D depth of my character. If I create a duplicate of that depth effect and I invert it, you'll see that the two depth effects cancel each other out. If I drag the second depth mat into a higher value, we can see just part of our character is being revealed now. It looks like if I increase the amount by around 100, it works pretty well. This number will be dependent on your scene. For me, 100 does the trick. We don't want to have to animate too many keyframes. I just want this first depth mat effect to control the entire scan effect. I'll alt click the second depth mat stopwatch, and then I can parent that to the first depth mat. They are canceled out again because they are the same depth amount with one being inverted, so they're eating the 3D model from opposite ends. We know that if we add around 100 to the second depth effect, it'll look good, so I can just type plus 100 into that expression. Now, if we play with the main depth mat effect, you'll see that the scan effect is working. I'll just set the keyframes for it so that the soldier starts completely invisible, and then I'll set it so the scan goes past him. From here, I can duplicate my comp and name this duplicate transition. I'll leave both depth mat effects on this layer. In the first composition, I'll delete the second depth mat effect and select the invert box on the first depth mat effect. So now it appears like our soldier is just getting revealed again, but we can apply effects to the transition layer. Here I am just applying a find edges and a tritone effect for a digital kind of look. Duplicating the transition layers and offsetting the depth matte keyframes will give this effect a more complex style. Honestly, more is better here. More layers, more colors, more effects is going to look really good. I really love adding the Crates Hologram plugin to add to this effect. If I turn off the projection rays, it looks like such a cool transition. I also use the Crates Hyperglitch plugin. It's another great plugin that works really well for this digital scan look. It works especially well if you tint it. And of course, glows are going to really help exaggerate the scan. You're also not stuck with any specific layer stack. Try different blending modes and stacking the transition layers in different ways to see what works best for you. And here's what I ended up with for the shot. All right, let's try a text reveal next. I'll type out my text and center my anchor point by hitting Control Alt Home on my keyboard and then I'll use the align tools to center my text layer on screen. Then I can make it a 3D layer and in the geometry options, I'll extrude it way out. Then I can change the bevel depth to convex and increase the bevel depth to soften up those edges. I want to 3D rotate my text, but I want the rotation center to happen from the center of my 3D text, not that front face of the text. So I'll jump into my multi-view window here and use the pan behind tool by hitting Y. And then I can just drag that anchor point to the center of my 3D text using that top view window as a reference. Then I can just switch back to my main camera view. Now, if I rotate the text, it's gonna rotate correctly from that center point. 
I'll just keyframe a slight rotation so the text has a little bit of movement. From here, I'll just pre-compose that layer and call it 3D text and add the depth matte effect. I can increase this right until the text starts disappearing. Then I can create a duplicate of that effect by hitting Ctrl D and I'll invert that duplicate. Now they are canceling each other out like before, but if I increase the second depth matte effect amount, we can see that the text starts appearing again. I'll do the same thing I did before. I'll alt click the stopwatch on the second depth matte effect and I'll pick whip it to the first depth amount. Using this expression text, I'll just add plus 300. I can always change this number later if I want a thicker or thinner scan line. Then I could just keyframe the first depth mat so that the scan line moves across the text. You can add feathering to these depth mat effects too if you want a softer look. You may have to adjust the keyframes though to make sure that text is fully invisible when the scan moves across it. Here I'll just duplicate the 3D text layer and call the duplicate transition. This transition layer has both depth matte effects, but I'll delete the second depth matte effect from the original 3D text layer. It looks like my text is fully revealed and then disappearing. I actually want the inverse, so I'll just toggle the invert button on my 3D text layer's depth matte effect. And I'll remove all the feathering for now. I'll add my favorite plugin, the Crates Hologram, to the transition layer so we can see this working and I'll just disable the projection rays. You don't have to use third-party plugins, of course, I just like how fast and how cool these ones are. Let's try a native plugin. I'll add the tritone effect and let's tint this a blue color and then I'll add CC ball and drag the transition layer beneath the 3D text layer. If I mess with the ball size, I can get this digital look going. All right, let's try something else. I'll change the tritone midtone colors to a reddish orange and the highlights to a green. More color tends to look a lot better with this scan effect. Then I can add Crates Hyperglitch, my all time favorite plugin, and already that looks sick. From here, I'm going to up the intensity a little bit by adding a solid composite effect changed to black, and I'm going to add a glow effect on top of that. I'll change the blending mode to screen and voila. Try different colors, plugins, glows, and you'll come up with some of your own amazing 3D scan effects. You can come up with an infinite amount of creative and cool looks. If you want a link to any of the plugins that I used, check the description below. That's it for today. See you next time.